All right, so I just uploaded a short showing the LED light transformation on the interior of the car. Now I'm gonna begin starting on the LED transformation on the outside of the car. When I'm done, every bulb in this car will be LED. So today I'm gonna to be tackling the rear tail lights. Got the blinker assembly there. Got these from Zip Corvette. There's the part numbers in case you're curious. Go and pause it. And I just got done doing the entire interior, finishing the entire interior with a kit I got from vetlights.com for the car. It looks great. Check out that short if you want to see it. Highly recommended. Support uh, small Corvette businesses. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Should be pretty quick, but figured I'd document the process just in case someone wants to see it. All right, well, let's get going on the tail lights here. So I've got the LED replacements. I'm gonna go ahead and take out all of the factory bulbs. There's also a flasher assembly. Don't really know where in the equation that's gonna fit. I've been told it's kind of hard to get to. We'll figure it out. Just for reference, this has to be the jankiest setup ever. Got a ratchet with an extender, an adapter to an eight mil to a Torx bit. <laughs> That's probably a better way to do this, but you know, it works. Now everything back here is in working order still. I'm just doing this for aesthetics and just so like, Maybe I could leave lights on while I'm parked and not worry about the battery dying. Um, so I'm going to be retaining all the factory parts, putting them away safely in case I ever want to revert it back to factory or if something breaks and I got to throw a bulb in a pinch. Wow, look at that. Dielectric grease from 1996, maybe? I don't know. If anyone knows what this crap is, I'd be curious, but just so anyone knows, a little press and twist certainly helps. If you just go to straight twist the bulb, it'll spin inside this metal frame. Reinstallation of the LEDs couldn't be easier. Literally twists right into the socket and then you screw it right back on. So here we go. So here's what they look like when they're not on. Pretty cool. Uh, if you wanna kind of see a side-by-side -side of what they look like versus the stocks, I'll link a video down below. Uh, next, I need to replace the flasher assembly. It's under the dash. I actually just disassembled the dash yesterday to, in to install an LED footwell light. That's a different story. Should be pretty quick. I'll link another video in the description on how to find that. So our goal for the day was to get the LED tail lights installed and then also install the LED reverse lights. The LED reverse lights don't fit. I'm going to talk to Vet Lights and see if they have any suggestions or if I just need to get a different um, model number LED. The LED taillights were a bit more problematic. You saw me get them installed. It turns out that one of the buckets in the back wasn't actually fixed to the body correctly. So I took the entire housing out, adjusted it, got it back in place, put it back in. You may have also noticed that one of the lights was just permanently on, which is the reason why I actually dug into that taillight and got the bucket fixed. That problem seems to have solved itself. So here's a clip of the taillights now working correctly. Now the problem was they were working correctly, but the flasher on the inside was flashing incessantly. There's a link in the video description if you want to learn how to identify and replace the LED flasher unit. Let me show you what happened. Here's the flasher that I took out of the car. You can see it's two prongs, just a regular little flasher. Here's the one that came in the set that I bought from Zip Corvette. 
electronic. It's from uh, United Pacific. You notice it has this big pigtail on the outside for grounding, so I tried grounding it. It worked, but the flasher click would just happen constantly. Click, 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 whether the turn signals were on or off. Worked fine, but that was, oh my God, going to be super annoying. No way I was driving around with that. So I did a little Googling and it turns out an off the shelf part that I picked up at Advanced Auto, part EL12, swapped that one in, now everything's happy. I have no idea why Zip Corvette ships this with their kits. I guess it's because they're super universal. If you go to their website, they apply from C1s all the way to C4s, which is a little ridiculous. You think somebody there would have test fit this to a C4 before recommending it on a C4. Alas, this part goes in the trash. So since we couldn't get the reverse lights installed, I decided to go on the bonus quest. Uh, both of these showed up in the mail today. These are Morimoto Seal 5, 5x7 five LEDs. Comes with a variety of wires. Should be less of a shit show than installing the LED tail lights because there's no blinker mechanism. Also, Chris Fix, awesome. Used to own a C4, 96 actually. And he has a fantastic install video on how to replace headlights on a C4 Corvette. So I'm not gonna document the process. I'll again point to that video in the description. If there's anything weird I run into along the way that doesn't mesh with the video, I'll point it out for posterity. But uh, let's get going. Another concern that just dawned on me. The factory halogens weigh 201 grams. Let's put that in America units. 7.4 ounces. These are significantly heavier. Four times heavier at 28 ounces. How will that affect the headlights flipping up and down? I don't know. My guess is they're not going to be nearly as happy. But, I mean, it's rotating. How bad could it be? I guess we'll find out. Okay, this is going to be kind of a balancing act. But we're going to give it a good old college try here anyway. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, come on. This is the worst part about working on cars. We need three extra hands. Oh my god. Maybe I'm just an idiot. We'll get to the other side next and we'll see how it looks and how it operates. Here's a pro tip. Don't drop a screw in here. Oh my god. The fuck did this thing go? Aha. And these little $5 ding-dongs that you see at the checkout line at AutoZone really did come in handy. Nice. So last time I was playing with the headlights was when I replaced the headlight motors with brass gears. And it looks like I didn't do a great job of aligning the headlight, headlight opening. So I'm going to adjust those real quick. And I think we're done. Now I did not get a before and after of the headlight operation, but I should be able to tell pretty quick here if the headlights are angry or not. I have to say, these look absolutely fantastic. God, that's mean looking. Pretty good, you know, not mad about it. Hope I didn't install them upside down. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, the, uh, the brand is right side up. So that's always the fun thing with installing these is the headlights are flip while you're doing it, but. There we go, highly recommend. I'm gonna go with LED, everything else here in the front eventually. Uh, I gotta do a little more homework to make sure I don't deal with the same trash fire I did on the back. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, Morimoto 5x7 sealed beams, if uh, LED replacements, if you can swing the budget. You know, it's about 500 plus for the set. I'd say do it. Can't wait to go driving tonight. It's acting a little weird. If I turn on my high beams, they work. But if I turn on my driving lights, the fog lights, the uh, <laughs> high 
high beam light comes on. <laughs> so, uh, probably one of those resistors they talk about, but now the lights are working, just strangely.